The following episode contains adult content, violence, and explicit language. Listener discretion is advised. Vampire the Masquerade, Port Saga, Episode 9, The Lesson of Paybach. The Port Saga Railroad used to haul steel and supplies west to Richmond until the 1980s, when the U.S. started buying more and more steel from foreign countries. As the need for domestic material dwindled, so did the need for shipping lines out of Port Saga. As the railroad pulled freight cars out of service, they stored them here, in the railroad graveyard. This is Rebel's territory where she goes to, as Ezra says, play with her trains. I could see the appeal. It's like organized chaos with mismatched cars packed on the dead ends of rail lines. Row after row of entrances, exits, tunnels, and traps. Rebel? Fuck! Fuck! A single shotgun blast won't kill you, but it still fucking hurts. I have wanted to do that for a long time. You fucking shot me! Next one's taken off your head. Come on, I'm here to talk. I should box you right here. Hand you over to Hale. Maybe get my badge back. Rebel, I'm sorry. She'd still be alive if it wasn't for you. I know. Where do you think she learned all that cowboy shit? Going it alone, head first, bucking authority. You're right. But right here, right now, I need you to listen to me. You answer one question. After that, if you want me to leave, I will. You want to shoot me in the back or turn me over to Hale? I won't blame you. Rebel? How's that sound? Don't rush me, motherfucker. Okay. What's the question? That night, at Maya's house, when you found Aaron, was she still wearing her platinum wig? What? Was she still wearing her... Yes. Why? Because I found a second one. Another platinum wig in a storm drain right outside Neptune. What are you talking about? I'm going to slowly open up this bag. I want to show you something. Do not shoot me. These are two wigs. Exact same color, exact same design. This one I fished out of the drain. This one... I grabbed out of Aaron's haven. Go on. You took her back to her place, right? To clean up and change clothes? If she was wearing this when you found her, who was wearing an identical wig outside Club Neptune? Meaning someone else killed Lawrence? Wearing Aaron's face? Yeah. How? Malkavians have that ability. But if they were masked like that, why would they need a costume while using your magic invisibility cloak thing? Why would they need a wig? Lawrence had pretty good sight. Probably as good as Ezra. He might have been able to pierce through it. The costume was a redundancy, a a, a backup. In case the Aaron illusion failed, I'm not even sure what I think. Well, how'd the wig end up in a storm drain? I don't know. Maybe it fell off in the scuffle. Maybe the impersonator tossed it during their escape. Hold up. They would have needed to know exactly what Aaron was wearing to the party. They would have needed to know exactly how to draw Aaron away from the party. And they they would have needed a way to trigger her fugue state, and for a long enough duration, to assassinate Lawrence. It gets worse. To impersonate a specific person? That's a powerful ability. I don't know a lot of people who can pull it off. Can any of the Malks? Not that I'm aware of. Christ, Manas. That's what I'm thinking. Zelda. Or one of her people. Yeah, but before I go accusing another Primogen, I need to make sure. How? I have a plan. Don't suppose you want to come with me? Your car or mine? Well, mine's stolen. So... I'll get the truck. That's not a plan. That's conscription. Pretty much. You want to snatch Lysander, drag him to Club Neptune, and walk him through the crime scene? 
and make him psychically examine the area. How do you know he can even do that? I don't. See, not a plan. Why not use Ezra or your new friend Marlo? They're more likely to have the talent. I can't drag them any deeper into this. Oh, but I'm expendable. You're invested. How do you do that? Do what? Get idiots like me to do what you ask. Dragging Sasha and Aaron up to Moonlight Bay. Me letting you in on the investigation. Getting Ezra and Marlo to break you out of Cardiff House. Like a cockroach. Or a yeast infection. <laughs> There's just no getting rid of you. I don't know. Why did you decide to help me? I'm loyal. To me? To the system. You wondered how a Bruja sheriff ends up serving a Venture Prince. You really want to know why I didn't join the Anarchs with the rest of the Bruja? Yeah, of course. Because the Anarchs are a bunch of gangs fighting over ideas. Fighting over territory. There are no set laws, no system. Nothing to prevent one lick from killing another. I lived that life. And everything is great until you're beating someone half to death for wearing the wrong color. I don't care enough about politics to end up a pawn in someone else's turf war. Theobel kills hardest death, and now I'm a traitor because I didn't back his play? I don't know either of those two from Adam. I don't know Bell's true motivations. No one but Bell knows that. And that said, I do know the people in Port Saga, and they know me. And in a society where you literally cannot trust anything or anyone, I'm not gonna let some bruja I've never met decide who's my friend and who's my enemy. At least in the Camarilla, there are rules. Not even a prince can violate the masquerade. Not even an elder can kill someone without permission. So someone killed Lawrence, and if it wasn't Eren, then that someone's gotta pay. What about the Thinbloods? Thinbloods got a choice. Take the brand or go elsewhere. Keisha Troy, Marcus Pratt, Danny Takashi. Who? They get a choice? Don't sit in judgment of me, cockroach. Where'd you even get those names? Found them at Eren's place. So? This is a list of Thinbloods. Yeah. And you were hunting them? Yeah. Did Aaron kill these guys? Doubt it. She would have told me. So why does Aaron have a list of three Thinbloods you didn't catch and didn't kill? Maybe she was tracking them in her own time. I feel like there's something you're not telling me. I don't know why Aaron had that list. That's the truth. If you don't want to believe me... I believe you. Authorities in Port Sagar are searching hey, turn this up. serial arsonist who may be responsible for setting several fires in recent weeks. Properties include the Sunshine Park Recreation Center, a private residence in the Still Mill District, Rhythm Section, a local music shop on Victory Beach, and Lock and Load, a gun store on Oceanside. Christ. Authorities have not been able to... The gun store on Oceanside. It's run by a venture ghoul. It's where we get our dragon rounds. I used to teach at Rhythm Section. Sounds like the Inquisition's on the warpath. Which means we don't have a lot of time. Whoa, 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 T, baby. I'm a lover, not a fighter. Walk me through it again. Jesus fucking Christ, what fire monster crawled up your ass and died? Just do what he says, Lysander. Uh, I do not feel properly incentivized. Here we are. Outside Club Neptune, right where it happened. Now, walk me through it again. You know, I don't have to do anything either of you say. You're not the sheriff anymore, and you're wanted by the law. Has a blood hunt been declared yet? No. Then it's still just a misunderstanding. Now, walk me through it. Baby, I already told you I am tired of doing this shit for free. I'll work it out with you later. Can we just... Yes, we can. That's better. Tell me again. You're here, smoking. Then what? Like I said, I heard shouting. I walked over here. What were they shouting? What did they say? Bitch, I don't remember. I remember getting here. I see them over there fighting over the shotgun. Aaron tosses Lawrence in the fucking car. Shoots him twice. Tosses the gun inside. Kicks the door shut. Things go up in flames. Looks at me and disappears. Motherfucking voila. Wait. 
You were looking right at her when she vanished? Uh, yeah. Right at her. You really are one deaf motherfucker, aren't you? Yes. Right at her. Fuck. Fuck. I can't believe I missed it before. What? If I get out of your line of sight, I can vanish. But it takes a pro to disappear right in front of someone. I can't do it. I don't think Aaron could either. Can someone who knows how to create an illusion of a face also vanish right in front of people? Definitely. You know who I bet does that trick? Zelda. Yeah. Okay. Hold up. Hold the fuck up. Bring it in a second. Are you two fucking telling me that you have now involved me in some shit that implicates the scariest bitch in this city? Both y'all can go right the fuck off with all that shit. Uh Uh-uh. Where exactly were they fighting? Nuh-uh. Nuh-uh, nuh-uh, nuh-uh. Any other time, T, and maybe we could have had this beautiful, fulfilling one night stand, but you two are gonna get my ass killed. No one is going to get anyone killed. Just touch that spot and read me the psychic echo. Uh, okay. I want to note that I am doing this under extreme duress. Noted. Now, please. I need to know what happened. They're struggling. Erin is cold, detached. Lawrence is afraid. Tossed into the truck. Shot. Fire. Pain. Mm. Before then. Mm, They're walking out of Club Neptune. Something isn't right. Lawrence is suspicious. Lawrence asks Erin if she has found serenity. Aaron's confused. Lawrence knows it's not her. He pulls off her wig. It goes flying. He's shouting, demanding to know who she is. Aaron draws the shotgun. They struggle. Serenity? It's a call and response. He uses a few of them. Lawrence asked if she found serenity. She's supposed to say she's found wisdom. But she didn't. Because that wasn't Aaron. I thought you said she was still wearing the wig when you turned the corner. I think what he's saying is that the wig got tossed during the fight. What Lysander saw was the illusion. You know, if Lawrence hadn't seen through the facade, they would have gotten in the car, drove off. To where? Somewhere quiet, Um, maybe back to Maya's. The killer could murder Lawrence without interruption and dump the murder weapon in Aaron's lap. Then call you. Um. Baby, do y'all still need me here? Because I would like to not stand here for either of you to endanger me any fucking further. No, you can go, Lysander. Thank you. Thank you, fucking Jesus. I need a fucking drink. Lysander, you've been a big help. Seriously, I owe you one. Yeah, yeah, you know what? Let's never do this again. Okay, peace. So, how do you politely ask a Nosferatu if they assassinated a Malkavian provincian? I think we just asked them. So, we're sticking with stupid. Got it. Zelda! You owe me an explanation why! Titus? Do I? Why is there not one goddamn vampire in this entire city who can tell the truth? I do not lie. I surmise, assume, and... Occasionally exaggerate, but I never lie. Word games. Zelda stands under a lamppost. The light hitting the brim of her fedora casts a shadow across her face. But I can still see her smirk. You asked me who wanted your sire dead. I told you and provided evidence to that effect. Glass was meeting with the prince that night. Well, you never asked me who killed your sire. You only asked me if anyone had a reason to kill your sire. Your lack of thoughtfulness on the questions is your issue, not mine. I asked if any Nosferatu were at Club Neptune that night. You said no. Which is true. Bullshit. I know that someone impersonated Aaron. I know that someone impersonated her and then vanished in front of a witness. That takes a master. (laughs) You think I killed Lawrence? I think you did. Or you at least know who. 
Titus. Lawrence wasn't snatched in the dark and disappeared without a trace. That is how I deal with my enemies. Are you my enemy? The person who killed Lawrence is my enemy. If that wasn't you, then I kindly ask that you point me in the right direction. Think, child. Who has shown themselves to be combat capable? What have you seen appear before your very eyes? And what clan innately understands the need for stealth? The Banu Hakim. Usher. Yes. Usher killed Lawrence. Yes, though I can't tell you why. That you must uncover for yourself. Are you telling me Usher impersonated Aaron, killed Lawrence, and then took my job and executed Aaron for the crime he committed? That is precisely what I am saying. Oh my fucking god! I'm gonna kill that motherfucker! I'm, I'm, I'm gonna carve out his heart and shove it down his fucking throat! Hey, calm down. Don't tell me to calm down. Do not. Just don't. Don't. All right, all right. This is me dealing with my shit. I see that. How long you known all this, Zelda? How long have you been sitting on this? There's no profit in giving away secrets for free. Then why tell us now? Because it occurs to me there is profit in an open sheriff position, either by putting up one of my own or accepting a boon to promote another. Provided Hale takes the time, this time, to listen to the council. I'm taking this whole thing to Hale. Careful, Bruja. Hale's always treated me fair. She could have punished me when I refused her order, but she didn't. She'll hear us out. Well, she did fire you. <laughs> Hale isn't fair. She's practical. Do you remember Paybok? Yeah. Uh, Nosferatu Elder, incredibly powerful, served under Reynolds, so what? You weren't here for what happened. My turn for a story. So shortly after Hale took over as prince, one of the young Nosferatu murdered a Toriador's ghoul. So she had rebel detain this young Nosferatu at Cardiff House to await a decision. However, while Prince Hale was deliberating, Paybok walked into Cardiff House to release the young clanmate. No one could stop him. We tried. He walked in, opened the door, and walked out. And now Prince Hale had a problem. This was the first test of her leadership. New as she was, she needed the city to respect her and her rule. Whether or not it was an accurate statement, she could not be viewed as a puppet prince of the elders with no authority of her own. It placed Prince Hale in a precarious position. If she did nothing, then inaction would reveal her as weak. If she tried to punish Paybok, he would either refuse or use his brute strength to do as he wished. What did she do? She parlayed with Paybok. During that parlay, she asked if Paybok, as one of the elders who supported her ascension, supported her praxis. He said yes, of course. Then she explained that if the elders wanted her to execute their demands, the city had to believe in her sovereignty. Walking in and freeing a clanmate just because he could only made her appear weak and ineffective, which put the elders in the same position as when Reynolds left. Paybox saw her point, so she asked him to assist in strengthening her position. She explained the importance of pageantry and spectacle and asked him to play along. He agreed and they struck a bargain. Paybok would show contrition at court. He would submit to public staking and incarceration at Cardiff House for an agreed period. So the date for her to hold court arrives and the city kindred show up. I walk Paybok out to this menacing-looking table. It was a slab with attached chains and thick straps. 
She had me secure him to the table with the chains and belt him down so he couldn't move. That is when Prince Hale revealed a jagged tooth knife and used it to cut sinister lines into his flesh. Paybach, of course, put on a dramatic show. You could tell he was enjoying himself and the attention. She asks me to hand her the steak. I do. And with a flourish, she sinks the wood into his chest. Okay, so I'm not following why any of this matters. Because once Paybach was paralyzed, Hale asked Rebel for her sword. Which I gave her. With the sword in hand, Prince Hale said, I am prince of this domain. Disrespect me and the laws of this domain at your peril. And then she brought the sword down upon his neck. And Paybach met his final death. But that's not what they... Not what they agreed to? (laughs) There was no boon exchange or contract signed. Paybach was foolish enough to take a vampire simply at her word. Prince Hale rid herself of the most powerful vampire in her city and took his place. Your point? Prince Hale is a Ventru prince. She believes in her divine right to rule as a king. If you bring her anything less than irrefutable proof, she will end you both. Her patience for meddlesome youth only stretches so far. I see. That gives me a lot to think about. And I do hope that you think through your next moves. I like your chutzpah. I would hate to see it snuffed out. Yeah. Sorry for barging in. It's forgotten. Oh, and Titus. Yeah? Check your messages. And with that, Nosferatu disappears. You still got that burner? Yeah. Can I borrow it? Nine messages. Last message at 11.10 p.m. Titus, I don't know if you're getting these, but it's on. We're hitting St. Michael's in 20 minutes. Thought you should know. We gotta go. What is it? We're late for a party. Vampire the Masquerade. Fort Saga. Created by Rachel J. Wilkinson, with voice performances by Day In Geist, Kat Mermelstein, Riley Silverman, Aaron Ducky Lorette, Rachel J. Wilkinson, and Ricky Kramer. Portions of this podcast are the copyrights and trademarks of Paradox Interactive AB and are used with permission. All rights reserved. For more information, please visit worldofdarkness.com.